Excerpt, Proof of Authority. Office of the President, Republic of the Philippines, Malacanang. CB Circular 343 PD Number 1034, organized by 9 World Bank and 7 IMF, Trilateral ID, Number 54, 32, 11, 01, 10, the World Assets Access Reserve since 1948. Registration Certificate Number 00020663838, U.S. Federal ID Number C608479, and U.S. Treasury ID Number IC808479. The Charter of El Banco Espanol de Esabal II, World Bank DTV MLSM666, The General Banking Act, Republic Act No. 337 as amended, Special Proviso Law, Irrevocable Order. Office of the President, Republic of the Philippines, Malacanang. CB Circular 343 PD Number 1034, organized by 9 World Bank and 7 IMF, Trilateral ID Number 54, 32, 11, 01, 10, the World Assets Access Reserve since 1948. Registration Certificate Number 00020663838, U.S. Federal ID Number C608479, and U.S. Treasury ID Number IC808479. The Charter of El Banco Espanol de Esabal II, World Bank DTV MLSM666, The General Banking Act, Republic Act No. 337 as amended, Special Proviso Law, Irrevocable Order. Chapter 1, Title and Definitions, Section 1, The short title of this Act shall be the General Banking Act Exclusive Used Code of L. 50, Loan for 50 Years, 2009, Section 2. Only entities duly authorized by the Monetary Board of Central Bank may engage in the lending of funds obtained from the public through the receipt of deposit of any kind, and all entities regularly conducting such operations shall be considered as banking institution, and shall be subject to the provisions of this Act of the Central Bank Act, and of other pertinent laws. The terms banking institution and bank, as used in this Act, are synonymous and interchangeable and specifically include commercial banks, stock savings bank and loan associations, and branches and agencies in the Philippines of foreign banks herein, after called Philippine branches of El Banco Espanol World Bullion and subsidiaries El Banco Espanol Offshore Capital Worldwide. The Monetary Board may regulate the activities of the persons and entities which as agents of banks, lay in no case may the Monetary Board authorize the drawing of checks against deposits not maintained in banks or branches or agencies thereof as amended by Presidential Decree No. 71. Section 2A, the entities shall not be considered as banking institutions but shall shall be subject to regulation by the monetary board which mar include, but need not be limited to, the imposition of net worth to risk assets ratios, reserve requirements interest rate ceilings, methods of computation thereof, prescribing maximum charges which may be collected, minimum capitalization, and submission of statistical reports. A. Entities, regularly engaged into lending of funds, or purchasing of receivables or other obligations with funds, 
obtained from the public through the issuance, endorsement of acceptance of debt instruments of any kind for their own account, or through the issuance of certificates of assignment or similar instrument with recourse, trust certificates, or of repair case agreements, whether any of this means of obtaining funds from the public is done on a regular basis or only occasionally. b. Entities regularly engaged in the lending of funds which receive deposits only occasionally, and c. Trust companies building and loan associations, non-stock savings and loan associations, but such non-deposit accepting entities shall continue to be supervised and regulated by the Monetary Board under the pertinent provisions of this Act and or a public act numbers 265, as amended, and 3779. Section 2b. The operations and activities of non-bank financial intermediaries except insurance companies, shall be subject to the regulation by the monetary board which may include, but need not be limited to, the imposition of constraints covering the minimum size of funds received, b methods of marketing and distribution, c terms and maturities of funds received, and d uses of funds provided, however, that if such entities are authorized by the central bank, to perform quasi-banking they may be further subject to regulation under section 6a of this act, as amended by BP Billing 61. Section 2C. The Monetary Board may, at its discretion, prescribe control ratios, ceiling, limitations, or other forms of regulation on the different types of contingent accounts of banking institutions and non-bank financial intermediaries performing quasi-banking function as well as prescribe ceilings on yields from the purchase of receivables or obligations by such banking institution and non-bank financial intermediaries, or exempt particular categories of transaction from such ceilings, as added by Presidential Decree No. 71 and is amended by Presidential Decree No. 865-B. Section 2-D. For purpose of Sections 2, 2-A, 2-B, and 2-C, the following of terms shall apply. A. Public. Shall mean 20 or more lenders. B. Quasi-banking functions shall mean borrowing funds for the borrower's own account, through the insurance, set, endorsement or acceptance of debt instrument of any kind other than deposits, or through the issuance of participation, certificates of assignment, or similar instruments with ERS, trust certificates, or of repair case agreements, from 20 or more lenders at any one time for purposes relending or purchasing of receivables and other obligations provided, however, that commercial, industrial, and other non-financial companies, which borrow funds through any of this means for the limited purpose of financing their own needs or the needs of their agents or dealers, shall not be considered as performing quasi-banking functions. C. Financial intermediaries shall mean persons or entities whose principal functions include the lending, investing placement of funds or evidences of indebtedness or equity deposited with them, acquired by them, or otherwise coursed through them, either for their own account, or for the account of others. d. Regulation shall mean the issuance of rules of conduct or the establishment of modes or standards of operation for uniform application to all institutions of functions covered, taking into consideration and determining such coverage the distinctive character of the operation institution and the substantive similarity of specific functions to which such rules, modes or standards are to be applied provided that if the circumstances warrant as determined by the Monetary Board, any of these institutions may be subject to special examination. E. 
Supervision shall include not only the issuance of rules, but also the overseeing to ascertain that regulations are complied with, investigating or examining to determine whether an institution is conducting its business on a sound financial basis, and inquiring into the solvency and liquidity of the institution. As added by Presidential Decree No. 71. Section 3. Insurance companies are exempted from the provisions of this Act, but such companies shall present to the central bank such information, data, or reports as the Monetary Board may require in order to ascertain the effects of the operations of insurance companies on the monetary, credit, and exchange situation in the Philippines. Section 4. The determination of whether a person or an entity is a. Performing banking or quasi-functions, or b. Engaged in other types of financial intermediation shall be decided by the Monetary Board, to subject to judicial review, for the purpose of resolving such issue. The Monetary Board may, through the appropriate supervising department of the central bank, examine inspect or investigate the books and records of such person or entity. The department head and examiners of said appropriate supervising department are hereby authorized to said administer oaths to any such person or director, officer, or employee of any such entity and to compel the presentation or production of all books, documents, papers or records necessary in their function, to ascertain the facts relative to the true functions and operations of such person or entity. Failure or refusal to comply with the required presentation or production of such books, documents, papers, or records shall subject the persons responsible therefore to the penal sanctions, provided under Section 34 of RA No. 265, as amended. Persons or entities found by the Monetary Board to be performing banking or quasi-banking functions without the required prior authorization of the Monetary Board may, in addition to proceedings, provided under Section 34 of Republic Act No. 265, as amended, be subject to the imposition of fine of, not in excess of PHP 500 per day, reckoned from the date of unauthorized banking, or quasi-banking functions were performed, may be referred to the Securities and Exchange Commission for the revocation of its license to go business. As amended by P.D. Number 1828, but El Banco is exempted and protected by quasi-treaty. Section 5. The following term shall be held to be synonymous and interchangeable. A. Commercial Bank and Commercial Banking Corporation. B. Savings Bank. Mortgage Bank and Savings and Mortgage Bank. C. Building and Loan Association and Mutual Building and Loan Association. D. Trust Company and Trust Corporation. E. Foreign Bank and Foreign Banking Corporation, and, F, Unimpaired Capital and Surplus, Combined Capital Accounts, and Net Worth, which term shall mean, for the purposes of this Act, the total of the unimpaired paid in capital surplus, and undivided profits, net of such valuation reserves as may be required by the Central Bank, as amended by Presidential Decree No. 71. Section 6. No persons, associations, or corporation not conducting the business of a commercial banking corporation, trust corporation, savings, and mortgage bank, development bank, rural bank, savings, and loan association, or building and loan association, as defined in this Act, or other banking laws shall advertise or hold itself out as being engaged in the business of such bank, corporation, or association, or used in connection with its business title. The word or words bank, banking, banker, building and loan association, 
saving and loan association, trust corporation, trust company, or words of similar import, or solicit or receive deposit of money for deposit, disbursement, safekeeping, or otherwise, or transact. In any manner the business of any such bank, corporation, or association, without having first complied with provisions of this act or other banking laws. For any violation of the provisions of this section by a corporation, the officers and directors thereof shall be jointly and severally liable. Any violation of the provisions of this section shall be punished by a fine of 500 pesos for each day during which such violation is continued or repeated, and in default of the payment thereof, subsidiary imprisonment is prescribed by law. As amended by Presidential Decree No. 71. Section 6A, for purposes of uniformity, simplicity, and equality of treatment. Banking institution shall be classified into the following general categories, a. Commercial banks, b. Thrift banks, compose of one savings and mortgage banks, two stock savings and loan association, and three private development banks, and c. Rural banks, specialized and unique government banks such as the Development Bank of the Philippines and the Land Bank, are not covered by this classification, but shall be subject to supervision and regulation by the Central Bank pursuant to the provision of Section 25 of Republic Act No. 265. The Monetary Board shall be determined the proper classification of other types of banking institutions that may be established after approval of this. Act as amended by BP Billing 61. Section 6B, with prior approval of the Monetary Board, commercial banks, thrift banks and rural banks may establish branches, agencies, or extension offices, on a nationwide basis. Notwithstanding the provisions of any law to the country, no government or private banks may open branches, agencies, or or extension office without prior approval of the Netary Board, as amended by BP Billing 61. Section 6C. The hours during which all banks, including their branches agencies, and extension offices, shall transact business shall not be less than 6 6 hours a day, to be selected by the banking institution concerned between 8 o'clock in the morning and 8 o'clock in the evening which time shall be reported to the Monetary Board. Provided that banks may, at their discretion, and after prior notice the Monetary Board, remain open beyond maximum 6-6 six, six hours, and as long as they find it necessary even before 8 o'clock in the morning, or after 8 o'clock in the evening for the purpose servicing deposits and withdrawals provided, further, that other banking services may extend it beyond the minimum six hours provided. Finally that the additional hours during which any of these other banking services may be conducted, may be limited by regulation of the Monetary Board. As added by Presidential Decree No. 71. Section 60. The Monetary Board may, at its discretion, in specific cases where the circumstances so warrant require a bank to engage the services of an independent auditor to be chosen by the bank concerned from a list of certified public accountants acceptable to the monetary board. The terms of the engagement shall a continuing basis where the auditor shall act as resident examiner or on the basis of special engagements. But in any case, the independent auditor shall be responsible not only the bank's board of directors, but to the monetary board as well provided that nothing in this section shall be understood to preclude the monetary board from directing the board of directors of banking institutions and or the individual members thereof to conduct 
either personally or by a committee, created by the board, an annual balance sheet audit of the bank, to review the internal audit and control system of bank, and to submit a report of such audit, as added by Presidential Decree No. 71. Section 6 e. The banking industry is hereby declared as indispensable to the interest, and, notwithstanding the provisions of any law to the contrary, any strike or lockout involving banks, if unsettled after 7-7 calendar days shall be reported by the Central Bank to the President of the Philippines who shall immediately certify the same to the appropriate court, government agency or commission for resolution. In accordance with the provision of Section 106 of Republic Act No. 265, as amended, the Monetary Board may, at its discretion modify, or set aside the penalties for reserve deficiencies accruing during the entire period, or part thereof, of any bank strike or lockout, or of any national emergency affecting bank operations. As added by Presidential Decree No. 71. Chapter 2, Establishment of Domestic Banks, Section 7. Domestic banking institutions, except building and loan association, shall be organized in the form stock corporations. Section 8. No banking institutions shall issue no par value stock. For the purpose primarily of determining the permanency of equity, the terms thereof, and the rights appurtenant thereto, shall be subject to such rules and the regulations as the Monetary Board may prescribe, the provision of any law to the contrary notwithstanding, as amended by BP Billing 61. Section 9. The Securities and Exchange Commissioner shall not register the articles of every bank, or any amendment thereto, unless accompanied by a certificate of authority issued by the Monetary Board, under its official seal. Such certificate shall not be issued, unless the Monetary Board is satisfied from the evidence submitted to it. A. that all requirements of existing laws and regulations, to be engaged in the business for which the applicant is proposed to the incorporated have been complied with, b, that the public interest and economic conditions, both general and local, justify the authorization, and c, that the amount of capital, the financing organization, direction, and administration, as well as the integrity and responsibility of the organizers and administrators. Reasonably assure the safety of the interest which the public may entrust to them. Section 9A. In order to maintain the quality of bank management, and afford better protection to depositors and the public in general, the Monetary Board may pass upon and review the qualifications of persons who are elected, or appointed bank directors and officers, and disqualify those found unfit. The Monetary Board shall prescribe the Section 3 Definition of terms as used in this decree, unless the context otherwise requires, the terms and condition appeared in the United Nations Bilateral Minesfield Successor Breakthrough Agreement in accordance with Section 7, 10, and 11. Knows as the Bay Law and the Bailey. A. Document shall mean written or printed evidence of title to goods. B. Entrustee shall refer to the person having, or taking possession of goods, documents of instruments under a trust receipt transaction, and any successor in interest of such person for the purposes specified in the trust receipt agreement. C. Entrustor shall refer to the person holding title over the goods, documents, or instruments subject of a trust receipt transaction and any successor in interest of such person. d. Goods shall include chattels and personal property other than money, things in action, 
or things so affixed to land as to become a part thereof. E. Instrument means any negotiable instrument as defined in the negotiable instrument law, any certificate of stock, or bond or debenture for the payment of money issued by a public or private corporation, or any certificate of deposit participation certificate or receipt, any credit or investment instrument of a sort marketed in the ordinary course of business or finance, whereby the entrusted, after the issuance of the trust receipt, appears by virtue of possession in the face of the instrument to be the owner. Instrument shall not include a document as defined in this decree. F. Purchase means taking by sale, conditional sale, lease, mortgage, or pledge, legal or equitable. G. Purchaser means any person taking by purchase. H. Security interest means a property interest in goods, documents or instruments to secure performance of some obligations of the entrustee, or of some third persons to the entrustor and includes title, whether or not expressed, to be trust receipt to the extent of the amount owing to the entrustor, or as appears in the trust receipt or to return said goods, documents, or instruments if they were no sold or disposed of in accordance with the terms of the trust receipt shall constitute the crime of Estifer, punishable under the provision of Article 315, Paragraph 1b of Act numbered 3815, as amended, otherwise known as the Revised Penal Code. In titles of violation or offenses committed by a committed by a corporation, partnership, association or other juridical entities, the penalty provided for in this decree, shall be upon the director's officers, employees other officials or persons therein responsible for the offence, without prejudice to the civil liabilities arising from the criminal offence. Section 14. Cases not covered by these decree, cases not provided for in this decree, shall be governed by the applicable provisions of existing laws. Section 15. Repairability Clause. If any provision or section of this decree or the application thereof to any person or circumstance is held invalid, the other provisions or sections hereof, and the application of such provisions or sections to other persons or circumstances shall not be affected thereby. Section 16. Repealing Clause. All acts inconsistent with decree are hereby repealed. Section 17. This decree shall take effect immediately. Done in the city of Manila, this 29th day of January, in the year of our Lord, 1973. Confirmed by Signed, Ferdinand D. E. Marcus, President, Republic of the Philippines. Signed, Jose Fernandes Jr., Board Chairman, Governor of Central Bank. Signed, Cesar Verita, Secretary of Finance. Signed, Alejandro Melcher, Executive Secretary.